The most ridiculous chefs in Cornwall left this kitchen in a state. Not just a state, but they can't even... Uh, they can't even do subsistence. They can't organise themselves. They can't learn a basic skill like putting a light bulb in. Can't even do what's in the job description to clean everything down, to wash veg, to how to make sauces. Oh my God. Started with Nick Hutton. Couldn't cook a hot meal unless he had about 24 hours notice. Got a reference, got a recommendation from the college that he could produce the most wonderful food and salads. That was key, salads. He could produce a nice meal, really nice. But not if five people walked in at the same time. He'd have to know exactly who was coming the day before. <sighs> then we had Ricky Fox, fat lazy bastard. The other worst one was Luke Cabbage, Savage. No CV, no pay slips, no qualifications, no references. Oh my God, last place he worked at, eight years. They didn't, couldn't get rid of him because he's such a nice fellow. We thought of him like our son. He tore that business into the ground. The problem with Luke is he's really stupid, illiterate, can hardly write, but super lazy and malicious with it in that he will rope everyone else in to do his work for him. So not only is he useless playing games which he can only be bothered to play on his phone with one hand, not because it's more of a challenge, because he didn't take on any challenge in the kitchen, just because he's too bone idle and lazy to engage more than one thumb in the game. That really sums him up. For 12 weeks, I tolerated him playing games every day. And then the idiot head chef, who thought he was friendless, who brought Luke in, um, tried, to, tried to run past me, but they're doing research. Every bloody shift where Luke was on his own, oh, Lee hasn't shown me how to cook this. I don't know how to do it. This is after two hours prep and playing video games, he then decides he doesn't know how to cook the five things on the menu. That was the second time we opened, we had hardly anything on the menu. And now that he's gone, I find all the little accessories in the wrong place. That's grater for the food processor. That means you basically haven't got a grater, or you're gonna do it by hand like an idiot. Um, lots of things that should have gone in the wash, crockery and so forth he just stuck in the rubbish in the recycling the cardboard recycling he is that damn lazy and that disinterested in maintaining a career never cooked anything would come in on a Saturday and waste Lee's time um, to not, not only totally useless uh, detrimental when I finally put my foot down about the video gaming um, he spent an hour and a quarter watched it on CCTV, chatting up the barmaid. So they didn't get any work done. She didn't get any glasses clean. And, and then he pissed off at one o'clock. I told him to go home. This is after 12 weeks of tolerating his utter stupidity and laziness. Why do restaurants go under? Because they attract the lowest of the low staff. It doesn't matter how much you pay them. We were paying top quartile rates. Uh, it would be sensible to fear losing your job here, but they would still come and do nothing. Even getting people to learn how to cook was a task and a half. The only people who wanted to come here were drug addicts and alcoholics. Bar one, maybe two staff out of about 50 over the three years we were open who were any good at all. And that one includes the head chef, Lee, he could definitely cook, but had major psychological problems uh, and just broke down into depression and entrusted people like Cabbage, who just basically fucked his whole vocational career. He would have got a Michelin star here, 
we would have uh, nurtured him. Instead, he went off to cook double breakfast shifts down the local coach hospitality centre because he didn't want, because he wanted us to keep Lee. Well, Luke, there's no point, there's no rational argument keeping someone like Luke. It's just a matter of time before they run your business into the ground. They're dishonest, totally worse than useless, and unproductive to the degree that they'll basically lose customers every shift. You can't do that. You can't do that in a quiet town. Actually, I would argue you can't do it anywhere. In a busier restaurant, he'd have been sacked in the first week. What other idiots have I had? Daniel. God. Joel. Oh, God. Emily. Oh. Um, they just stole. They're so stupid, Joel and Emily. They stole hundreds of pounds um, that they just didn't put through the till. In our first few weeks, they thought no one would notice. See, but this, the, you, you can't run a successful industry, hospitality, unless you work in it yourself. Because the staff that you're going to attract in these ho holiday destinations, like Cornwall, are going to be crap. That's why, when I was a bit younger and we used to come to Cornwall every year, I was always disappointed with every food offering. Even the coffee. 